welcome. Here we're looking at an anterior view of a left hip bone. And what we can see, firstly, there's a few structures on your list uh, that are not on any one of the three bones, ilium, ischium, or pubis, that make up the hip. So we'll look at those ones first. Here we've got the obturator foramen, quite a large uh, opening there. And towards the top of the obturator foramen, and best seen from a, a medial point of view, there's a groove in here. That's the obturator groove. So that we can see there. Uh, from a lateral point of view, again, here we can see the acetabulum. So this whole uh, socket here for the head of the femur is the acetabulum. But there's a couple of features of it that you need to know. Firstly, this kind of crescent shaped smooth part here is the lunate surface of the acetabulum. So that's the lunate surface. In life, that would be covered in articular cartilage, which is why it's nice and smooth. In the middle of that here, towards the inferior aspect there of the acetabulum, we've got the acetabular fossa. Now in life, that's not covered with cartilage. It's actually covered by a fat pad. Now inferior to that, we have the acetabular notch. Now on this particular bone, it's quite unusual because here we've got something that shouldn't really be there. And what that is, in life, that would have been part of the uh, transverse acetabular ligament that runs across the acetabular notch. And this part has ossified or calcified and become bone. So if we look at it from a superior point of view, you can see there is a bit of the acetabular notch there, but this bit is encroaching on it. And that really shouldn't be there. So normally you won't see that. Normally there'll just be a big notch there, a big space, without this little arm of bone there in between. So, lunate surface, acetabular fossa, and then acetabular notch there. All of those things make up the acetabulum. But remember, be as specific as you can. So if you're in an exam, and there's a pin here, that's the acetabular fossa. Or if there was a pin here, that's the lunate surface. So please be as specific as you can. Okay. Then uh, I think we're, oh no, we can now look at the ischiopubic ramus. So here's the obturator foramen again, inferior to that. This arm-like projection here, this entire thing, is the ischiopubic ramus. So it's in between the body of the ischium and the body of the pubis. So that entire structure, ischiopubic ramus. There are two parts to it, but we'll come back to them in a little while. All right, now let's look at the ilium. Now, if we're looking here at a lateral view of this left hip bone, if we were to draw a line across the acetabulum here, roughly, everything above that line is ilium. And if we were then to draw a line across here, everything in front of that line would be pubis. Everything behind that line, this is posterior over this side, would be ischium. So the first one bone we want to look at is ilium. That's the more superior part of the hip. And the first structure we'll look at is the iliac crest. So this superior extent of the ilium, this ridge right along the top, is the iliac crest. Now it has a tubicle on the crest, and that's seen from a lateral point of view. And notice that it's, it starts here. Well, sorry, it starts here. This is the tubicle. So it's only a couple of finger breadths uh, from the anterior superior iliac spine, or ASIS here. So this is start of the iliac crest just here. Not far along on the lateral point of view, there's the tubicle of the iliac crest there. Now then, the, as I said before, the iliac crest starts here at the ASIS. So we can see that on the ilium. Inferior to that, we have the AIIS, or anterior inferior iliac spine. So those are the two anterior spines. Posteriorly, we then have the PSIS, posterior superior iliac spine, which is really quite prominent, and much less prominent, the PIIS here, posterior inferior iliac spine. So those are the four spines there. And then we have, not far from the PIIS, the greater sciatic notch. So this notch here, oh sorry, that was well done. This notch here is the greater sciatic notch. 
then on a from a medial point of view we can see this fossa here is the iliac fossa and of course the iliacus muscle sits in that and if we come back to a lateral point of view we can see now on this particular hip bone the gluteal lines are about as good as they ever are so this one's not bad but even on this one they're not as amazingly distinct you know a as they as would be nice if they were but what we can see is we have a posterior gluteal line you can just see a couple of little bumps there that make a ridge so there's the posterior gluteal line there and then we have an anterior gluteal line now the anterior gluteal line starts here and carries on across the middle of the gluteal region there so there's the anterior gluteal line now often on specimens and models there isn't much of a line to see there but that one's not bad there's the anterior gluteal line there and then the inferior gluteal line is here now the inferior gluteal line is actually in, in a lot of ways more anterior than the anterior one sorry about that if it was up to me I'd probably just say anterior middle posterior I reckon that would be clearer but the way we have it is inferior anterior and then posterior now the thing is the couple of the gluteal muscles attach in between those lines so your gluteus minimus attaches in here and the gluteus medius attaches in here okay between the uh, anterior gluteal line and the and the iliac crest there and the posterior line so gluteus medius here minimus here if you look at one of the painted uh, skeletons you'll see the anterior gluteal line should be a little white area of bone there in between two red bits where there are painted muscle attachments all right so that's the gluteal lines then we have the iliopubic eminence now with this one <coughs> if you go asis AIIS, the next bump is the iliopubic eminence. So we can see it here. Oh, the light's not that great, but you can see that there's a bump there just inferior to the AIIS. Now it's partly on the ilium, partly on the pubis, so it's called the iliopubic eminence. Then we've got the iliac tuberosity, and we'll look at the auricular surface while we're there too. So at first, the auricular surface is this supposedly ear-shaped surface here, which is where the sacrum articulates. Now the sacrum has an auricular surface on it too that's going to sit right here. So that's the where the sacroiliac joint is. So that's the auricular surface of the ilium. Just superior and posterior to it here, we have the iliac tuberosity. And that's where the uh, interosseous sacroiliac ligament will attach. So it comes from the tuberosity on the sacrum and attaches here to the tuberosity on the ilium. Very big, strong ligament with a large surface area. So auricular surface, iliac tuberosity right there. And then of course we have iliac crest just, just there behind it and PSIS there. Okay, so that's the tuberosity and auricular surface. Lastly then on the ilium, we have the arcuate line and it's showing up beautifully here with the shading, the light the way it is. So here's our uh, iliac fossa. This line here is the arcuate line. Now the arcuate line, you'll see that's on the ilium, is continuous with a line here on the pubis. That's a different structure. We'll come back to that one when we, when in a sec when we're looking at the pubis. So the arcuate line is just this part here on the ilium. It's going to end here when you get to the iliopubic eminence. So it's going to end about there, arcuate line. All right, now let's look at the ischium. So remember if we look from a lateral point of view here, and we already had a line drawn here to separate the ilium from the other two bones, then if we draw a line through here, everything behind that line and below this one is going to be ischium. So it's this region of the hip here. Firstly we have a body. Now from this point of view we can see the body here. The body of any bone, if it, if it has a body, is going to be the central large part that other bits are sticking off. So that's the body of the ischium. But in a way we can probably see it more clearly from a posterior point of view or a medial point of view. So body of ischium there. And then there's a tuberosity. 
on the issue, and that's this part here. It's inferior and posterior, and of course your hamstring and some other muscles, hamstring group and other muscles attach there to make that a big muscle attachment point. And at the moment, you're probably all sitting on it, so it's that hard bony bit at the bottom of the pelvis there. Then we have an ischial spine coming off the body. So seen from a posterior point of view, there's the ischial spine there. Or from a, a more medial or anterior, an anterior point of view, there it is there. Sometimes on the real bones, it's broken. So just be aware, it may not be as clear or as easy to spot as this one. But that's the ischial spine. Now just inferior to the ischial spine, we have the lesser sciatic notch. So superior to it, we had the on the ilium, we had the greater sciatic notch. So inferior to the ischial spine is the sorry again, is the lesser sciatic notch just here. Uh, and then lastly, we have the ramus of the ischium. And that one, remember this is the ili uh, ischiopubic ramus here, this whole structure here. And this is the body of the ischium. Now, a ramus is an arm-like projection, usually coming off a body of a bone. So the ischial ramus is just this part here. So it's about half of this ischiopubic ramus. So if we draw a line through here, there was a pin here. That's it. That's the ischial ramus. Now, pubis. Again, from this lateral point of view, firstly, we can see a body. So there's the body of the pubis there. It has a superior ramus and an inferior ramus. And so the ischiopubic ramus is half made up of the ischial ramus, half the inferior pubic ramus. So if there were a pin here, inferior pubic, a pin here, ischial ramus, a pin in some blue tack or something else that's running right along this ramus here, that would be the ischiopubic ramus. So there's three structures you need to know here. Ischial ramus, inferior pubic ramus, ischiopubic ramus. Then we've got the symphysial surface. Now that's the surface here that's kind of uh, uh, seen from a medial point of view where the pad of fibro cartilage will be that makes up the pubic symphysis or um, symphysial joint there between the two pubic bones. So that's the symphysial surface there. Fibro cartilage will be attaching to that or articulating with that. Then anteriorly, we have the pubic tubicle here. Uh, on some models and specimens, it's uh, even a little more prominent than it is on that one. So on this one, look at that. There's the, the pubic tubicle there standing out quite a long way. Now from the tubicle, to the symphysial surface here, if there is a, a very a well-defined ridge, oh sorry, a well-defined ridge, that is the pubic crest. Now sometimes it's more horizontal, sometimes it's more vertical, but if there's a clear ridge or line of bone there, that's the pubic crest, and it is variable, and often on the real bones it can be damaged. Same with the, the pubic tubicle, sometimes both can be broken. So on this one, I'd say the pubic tubicle is here, and then this is the pubic crest here. I, well you can see that pretty well on the, on the bone there. Okay, and then lastly, we have the pectin pubis, which is this line here on the superior surface of the pubis there, which is continuous with the arcuate line on the ilium. So this is arcuate line on the ilium, this is the pectin pubis on the pubis. This is the iliopubic eminence. That's about where the ilium ends and the pubis starts. All right. So that's the uh, skeletal structures there for the hip.